Well, it's time for my yearly recap where I put all my videos together in a nice feature-length presentation, along with some light commentary in between each one. 2023 was a slow year, but I feel like my editing skills have gone up a lot since then. So, what I lacked in quantity, I definitely made up for in quality, and I'm quite proud of that. To start off the year, I have my Donut Dodo review, and I feel this video is the start of my more normal format, where I get to just interview a game dev and go full ham talking about what I like. The artist for the thumbnail was my friend Moontoon, and as you can see I gave her my beautiful sketch and she refined it into pure gold. All in all, this video was really fun to make, and while it shows its age, I'm quite proud of it. One funny detail about this video not a lot of people know is that I actually edited 90% of this video with the arcade borders up, which actually made it slightly easier to edit since I had a smaller ratio to work with. It's still pretty aesthetically pleasing, but I'm surprised nobody noticed that. When it comes to video games, you can't beat the golden era of the arcade. There's something magical about the endless simplicity and replayability of games like Pac-Man, Galaga, Daytona USA, and many other classics. And while fan games and mods are fun and all, nothing beats a fresh original experience. Made by Pixel Games, Donut Dodo is an action platformer where you play as Billy Burns on the quest to stop this dodo from stealing your DONUTS! Special guests such as Snippy, Stinky, and Winky work with the dodo in order to stop you on your donut catching adventure. One thing I love about this game is how it takes inspiration from existing classics and spins it into a way to make its own unique game that has its own identity rather than trying to be the next Mario. While making this video, I got a hold of Zaphosh, the creator of the game, and asked him where the idea for these characters came from. Shoutouts to Dorochi for reading his answers, by the way. I can't really say where the idea came from. It came just like that along the way. Once the playground was working, I needed a bad guy, so I thought about this really greedy dodo. Donut. <laughs> At the same time, the player needs a challenge to beat the game, which in turn led to the donuts. The game cycle is born. As for the characters, I usually design them right away in pixel art, so I have no other concept art for now. Billy Burns did not change much over his nine iterations, but he became more charismatic, confident, and friendly over time. One thing that remains consistent throughout the entire game is how tight the controls are. I never felt like I was cheated out of a jump, or there was some sort of cheap jank mechanic that would kill me unintentionally. Minor things like changing your direction midair and the instantaneous snap of climbing are often taken for granted. So when asking him about the tight controls, he said, I agree. Bad controls can totally ruin the experience. In fact, I have terrible memories of how ladders worked back in the old arcade games. I kept getting stuck on those. Things like not being able to influence jumping would also lead to frustration and cheap deaths. So while the game looks like an old arcade game, it's meant to control better. For some actions, I stuck to the old formula though, like not being able to move the player when falling. This way, you can walk off a ledge to collect a donut while relying on a totally predictable trajectory. Another thing I have to praise is the stage layout and diversity. There are five unique stages that have something special to offer and keep you on your toes. Stage 1, Funhouse Fiasco, is a great first level to get the feel of things. The ladders are snappy, and the layout is easy to read thanks to the great use of color and depth in the stage. A few rats run amok, but they're easy to avoid. And last but not least, the toilet hunts you down like a madman. <laughs> Keep in mind you can't jump over it, so evading it by skillfully maneuvering around the stage is key. All the while, the dodo drops some questionable projectiles on you from up above. Stage 2, Construction Site Chaos, is similar to the first stage, but now has a big gap in the middle, all the while fire chases you down from above, and to top it off, the dodo spits at you. My only word of advice would be to watch out when getting the final dodo, as it's very easy to get psyched out when it moves up and down. Okay, come on. Time. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! Stage 3, Ferris Wheel Frenzy is probably the most impressive in the list. While it has much less area to walk on, you get to maneuver through a non-stop Ferris Wheel while deadly balloons shoot upwards, and you share an uncomfortable ride with a dodo that did not invite you on said date. Stage 4, Candy Store Crush introduces climbable ropes with noticeably less platforms while the dodo drops down hazards via the candy machines, depending on which side you're on. Baking skills be damned, my boy can work a pole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
While there's a lot less that can hit you, it's easy to be caught off guard. Stage 5 is Dodo's Lair, and while it may look straightforward, the real threat comes from the doors that warp you around. And the return of Stinky, who actually kind of reminds me of the toilets from Captain Underpants, but I'm sure there's no correlation. Anyway, be sure you pay attention to the occasional boulder that drops, because that kept throwing me off time and time again. Probably because when you move from one side of the screen to the other, you'll pop out horizontally, but when the boulder does it, it just moves down a level, so keep that in mind. After stage 5 is the bonus round where you can amass points by bouncing on this pumpkin to collect extra donuts. And believe me, it's a lot harder than it looks. But when you master it, it feels pretty good. When you think about it, making an arcade game means lots of replayability and level design tweaks. If it's too easy, players will grow bored. But if it's too hard and complicated, it leads to frustration. So what did the levels look like initially during development? Did you nail the layout on your first try, or did you have to make a lot of changes? And which stage is your favorite? The first stage designs are really simple, to get the feeling right for the mechanics in each level. Here's an example of how things started out. Then comes a lot of trial and error, playtesting, changing things around, etc. Once it all starts coming together, I spend more time on the final visuals. I think my favorite level is Ferris Wheel Frenzy. The music is crazy, and the mechanics are fun. Smiley face. Now after we finish stages 1 through 5 and complete the bonus stage, like all good arcade games, we have to go for another round. The good news is that all our progress wasn't a dream unlike some games. Most changes you'll find here are to be expected, such as enemies moving faster and the margin of error being very small. But if you can get through all that, once you beat stage 5, you have finally defeated the Dodo! Anyway, when you beat the game, my favorite bit right here is the text. As many of you know, a lot of classic, and modern games, used to have typos in the end. Donut Dodo purposefully does this in reference to Ghost and Goblins for NES. It's funny, it fits the game's aesthetics, and I genuinely love it. When you dig into the mechanics of how this game plays, you'll notice hints of other arcade classics. For example, you have to collect all the items on the stage while avoiding enemies, just like Popeye or Burger Time. But if you were to go for the highest score, you can opt to collect the donuts in a randomized order like Mappy for a combo bonus, rather than collecting all the items in one sweep. Not to mention a bonus timer that's always counting down, incentivizing you to play faster, just like Donkey Kong. Sticking around on the attract screen will give off the generic blurbs of how to play in the cast of characters, but I always find the high score list to be quite charming. It's not subtle, but I honestly love the innocent callouts to other legendary arcade games. Seeing all this makes me wonder, how long have you been making games, and what's your personal history with video games? I started off as a bedroom programmer as a kid, on the Sinclair Spectrum 48K, the Timex Spectrum I think in the US. Later down the road I joined Ubisoft to work on Rayman and other games, but ended up missing those early years. When mobile gaming appeared, a new indie market emerged. Creative, fun, and very similar to the one I had known back in the day. Development tools were becoming accessible too, so I took out the opportunity and went solo, making it my full-time job, which I'm very passionate about. Overall, Donut Dodo should be considered a modern classic that should be in every arcade fan's collection. The gameplay is smooth, the music is an absolute banger, and there was definitely a lot of love put into this. With that said, what do you plan to do with Donut Dodo in the future? What has been on my mind for quite some time though is a genuine 8-bit port of the game for the NES, including a boxed physical release on cartridge. The incredibly talented Cosmic Gem would also love to rework the music for the 2A03 chip. I don't know if I'll find time to work on this version, but it'd surely be a fun challenge. Thanks a lot for the great interview, stay in touch. Well, I really hope that comes to fruition in the future. Seeing it run on a real NES hardware would be phenomenal. Again, I want to give a big thanks to Zaposh for letting me interview him. If you're interested in getting the game or the soundtrack, links will be below for anyone interested. And remember, stay foxy. I'll be honest, this Pokemon Violet is a review with heavy quotation. I'm just going to admit that I want an excuse to have some Pokemon gameplay on my main channel, and while this is the true first video of 2023, I'd rather not say that. Thumbnail art is from my friend Vulfin, and it's basically just a draw over of the final boss of the game. After this video, I decided to stop doing more meme stuff and really focus on things that would last a lot longer. So we can kind of call this the filler episode, unless you like memes. Might not make this one, but we're gonna try. He's just standing there. 
menacingly. Perfect. Bingo. <laughs> of course you're gonna use Tailwind. Nope. You son of a bitch! Uh, I knew it! He's swapping out. Drawing. Oh. Ha. Ah, you were holding. Oh, I know what you were doing. <laughs> Frenzy. <laughs> Get tackled, idiot. Bird up. Play. Wow. Frick. What's he sending out? Oh, this might be a problem. Uh oh. Yeah. Fisto, take care of this dragon. Send it straight to hell. Nice punch. Come on, Fisto, baby. I know you're fast enough. I know you're fast. Come on. Don't let me down. Broski, what are you doing? Huh? Nice. Gotta make a sandwich. Let me you stay here. I'm actually stuck. You gotta make a sandwich and you're gonna love it. No, I don't want to <laughs> join your sandwich and make hell. Get me out of here. I make actually a sandwich stuck. with me. This is terrible. <laughs> come on, come on. Ella. I think if you make a sandwich, you'll be, you will be free. I'm gonna post this on Twitter. <laughs> but okay. please, with okay, with no but sound. I'm still stuck. Come on, maybe if I crouch, I can get out. Come on, get me. Come on. Ah. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make a sandwich and uh, later I'll release you later. Help! <laughs> enjoy, this, enjoy the sandwich. Wait, you're still stuck? Yes, I'm still stuck. What? Unhand me! Oh, I'm oh, free! Okay. <laughs> I'm free! I'm free! Get away from me! Oh my god. I'm free, you'll never catch me. This game is so alive. broken, man. You'll never catch me. Let's make another uh, picnic. Come here! Come no here! No more picnics! <laughs> I'm going far, far away from you. <laughs> Angry Birds vs. Cult of the Lamb is old news by now, but it's one of those you had to be there to see it types of weird dramas that you could not ignore. And yes, all these months later, I still think Cult of the Lamb won this battle. So buckle up and enjoy an extremely weird and niche chunk of internet history. So I like to use Twitter on a daily basis. <laughs> and when I'm not looking at the man-made horrors beyond my comprehension, some 14-year-old's bad take, or the abundance of groomers getting exposed day by day, there's a lot to keep me entertained. You trying to have sex with me? And nothing keeps me more entertained than some good old internet drama. <laughs> Our story starts with Cult of the Lamb, a game made by Massive Monster and published by Devolver Digital where the goal of the game is to operate a cult. 
And Duolingo, the application that teaches you a new language in a bite-sized format, and is also known for making very ominous threats. So, Lamb initially challenges Duo to the Creator Clash. You know that event where YouTubers actually fight IRL instead of behind a large Twitter following? But right before things take off, Red the Bird from Angry Birds, and I do hope you know who that is, quotes Lamb with a challenge. From gamer to gamer, I will fight you. Mad emoji. With what appears to be every Facebook boomer selfie taking at a bad angle. So, uh, off to a good start, Red. Lamb, not knowing where this random rack of hostility comes from, replies, Bruh, this bird be angry. Red, obviously mocking the game's art style, says, I just want to talk. But Lamb is having none of this and says, Seems like all you want to do is talk, sh With a nice depiction of Red holding a large turd. Now, it's at this point when things are getting heated and Red decides to bring the beef. Literally. And says, Careful. I was sacrificing pigs before anyone knew who you were. Lamb drops next. Also, if we can just step back and get real for a moment, I just gotta say I think it's really funny thinking about the effort this social media manager put into pulling out a pan, oiling it, shaping the beef into a patty, because if you look closely, that's not a cheap frozen patty, and then using Red's wing to flip the patty. It's just wild to think how a good 10 minutes of real world effort went into this 5 second gif. So you may wonder, how could Lamb possibly top this? Well, they did, and in the most brutal way possible. Tomatoes go great with that hamburger. Showing off the Rotten Tomatoes score for the freaking Angry Birds movie. That's like if I tried to own somebody on Twitter, but they pulled out my YouTube analytics showing that a majority of you watching aren't subscri- Oh wait, that's actually pretty good. Thanks guys. It's at this point that Cult of the Lamb has Angry Birds in a chokehold, and the social media manager running it is probably sweating bullets right now. Knowing that if he loses an argument to an indie game, he could probably kiss his job goodbye. So, how does Red respond? With probably the weakest comeback I've ever seen. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! It's honestly a pretty pathetic response. Even fans of Red in the replies are disappointed. I think Nut Quesadilla's reply perfectly encapsulates how hard they dropped the ball in this one. You could have flaunted the score of your second movie made fun of the fact they don't have any movies to begin with, showed how much it made in the box office, but you chose to show weakness. Shameful, Red. Shameful. And you know what? I gotta agree with that. So, knowing how bad that tweet was, Red makes another, and more successful, attempt at trying to own the lamb with probably the most gut punch response I've ever seen. Do y'all need a parachute or are you good? Bro pulled out the stats from Steam, and basically said, your game's dead. Lamb replies with a humorous but not as hard-hitting response saying, I made a portal to 2010, so you can finally be happy again. I mean, if we're gonna be honest, gaming was a lot simpler back then, and apps were a lot less cash-grabby too. Not to mention, memes were kinda at their peak around the 2010 to 2012 era, and now that I think about it, you know, this is less of a roast and more of a sad realization of how things were kind of better back then. Cult of the Lamb, knowing they took mortal damage, decides to go for one last ditch attempt by taking Red down with them, with the aid of Deadly Mew 76 artwork. Enough! The Lamb grows tired of these games. This could be us, but you play it. The crowd goes wild. The replies confused. The fanboys shocked. The brands are being brands. After this response, the Angry Birds Twitter goes silent for like three days. Honestly, I think bro is dead. I don't think I'd be able to be able to recover from something like that. But in classic internet fashion, Red comes back with a wholesome tweet of him playing their game. Yeah, I'm playing. Playing your game. I honestly don't know what I was expecting from this, you know, maybe a good old-fashioned KYS or a good old, you know, just doxing, but I, I forgot this is 2023, this isn't 2012, um, yeah. I hope you fall off that swing and snap your neck and never recover and live your life as a best of So, what did we learn today? Brand accounts are not your friends and only exist to stay in the public mind so they can sell you more products.
stop worshipping them, and remember, the only good brand account is the Norm of the North one. Okay, hello, Tay and Post here. So, right before I was about to finish this video, it turns out that Angry Birds is being delisted again by their parent company. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like Cult of the Lamb got the last laugh. So, oof. Thanks for watching, and remember, stay foxy. Oh boy, this video is weird. Like, even today, I still have no idea what was going through my head while making this. And now that a year has passed, I figured out the reason. I was so happy I moved out of my parents' place that I just wanted to make a goofy April Fool's Day video where I could just be myself without backlash. And you know what? As stupid as it is, I'm still proud of it. Artwork is once again made by my friend Moontoon, as I wanted the TV salesman vibe, and once again, she delivered perfectly. Late one night while on my PC, uh, you didn't see that, I was scrolling through Twitter just seeing what the daily dose of cancer was for the internet. While doing so, I decided to look through one of my favorite meme accounts, and then the idea hit me like a ton of bricks. The tweet seemed innocent enough. It simply read, me in my room with an empty Pringles can, two sponges, rubber bands, and a latex glove. Immediately after realizing the potential this tweet had, I quickly ran to Twitter and started furiously typing out my idea to the world. Everyone scoffed at me. You what? Made fun of me. Bruh. Called me a blasphemer. They called me insane. They called me all sorts of things. But you know what? They weren't ready for what I was about to show them just yet. So I got in my car, drove to Walmart, and once inside, I know what I needed to get. Item number one, a Pringles can. And don't buy everything in one place. The chips are kind of mid, but we're here for the structural integrity of the can. For item number two, I needed two sponges. It would piecemeal. Different items, different stores. Good thing Walmart sold them in this four pack. And for item number three, the last item, I finally got a pack of rubber gloves. Attracts less attention. After checking out and heading home, I finally had all the ingredients I needed to take over the world! I mean, build the Pringles can thingy. That's right, my voluptuous virgin viewer. Today, I have a product that's going to rock your world. Can Gucci is a revolutionary device that lets you do anything. It's a fix-all, cure-all, revolutionary device of wonder. It slices. It dices. And most importantly, it even entices. Whether sunshine or rain, the applications of Can Coochie are never in vain. Lawyers hate us. The government berates us. What's our secret? It's approved by the FDA, FBI, CIA, and it's even STEAM verified. Don't believe me? Then ask some of our favorite convict for customers. Hello everybody, my name is Spider the Baby, and as you can probably tell, I suffer from chronic cringitis. Now, there are a lot of misconceptions about what this disease does mean, but I'll tell you one thing it does mean, it's hard to get the financials down right. So when I needed help, I turned to the coochie can. In the past, I would have to spend hours a week filling out these money laundering forms so that I could have more V-Bucks to spend on Fortnite without the IRS taxing my income. Unfortunately, it started taking such a toll that I find myself left with no more money. Honestly, 
this shit is getting me really fucking bummed. And then I remembered I had just bought my very first coochie can. So I grabbed it, took a look inside, and inside I found the solution to all of my problems. Bam. Thanks, coochie can. Before can coochie, throwing off any of the cadaver dogs was a massive problem. Three of the bodies I had buried had been found. But thanks to canned coochie, I can throw the cadaver dogs right off the scent and they'll never find a body again. In Lynn's Springbrook, Ontario, next to the creek. Thank you, Can Coochie. You've improved my life for the better. So what are you waiting for? Call now and get your very own Can Coochie today. But wait, there's more. If you call within the next 24 hours, you will get not one, but two cans of Can Coochie for free. I mean, build the Pringles can thingy. <laughs> Once you have all the materials together, building is quite easy. Oh! So let's start with the Pringles. Oh can. no! First thing you want to do is remove all the chips from the can. Um. After that, you want to get out your sponges. I decided to use these heavy-duty ones because they're definitely going to be taking a pounding. Lastly, we pull up the gloves, and then finally we get to my favorite part, which is putting it all together. I find it's easier to put together if you put the sponges together like a sandwich when assembling this. Finally, you want to pinch the gloves, slide it into the canister, pull the gloves over the lip of the can, make sure it's nice and tight, and voila, you have finished building. Now, some viewers will ask, you know, Tay, why would you even build such a thing? And to that, I would say, the internet? Uh, attention? I don't know, I thought it was just funny. I mean, <laughs> you got any more ideas, I'd be happy to see them. Uh, building something stupid like this, uh, might do some more things. Heck, might even do a potato cannon next time. But I mean, look at it, it's beautiful. Uh, you know, I heard a few of you on Twitter said, Hey, hey, where's the merch? So you know what? Here's your first piece of merch. Uh, one lucky viewer will be able to get this in the mail. So, I don't know, comment you want it or whatever. Oh my! <laughs> oh no! Um... What? Oh! Let him blah 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 blah! Anyway, thanks for watching this ADHD-infused video. Uh, I got better stuff coming soon, you know, this was just a little hold me over until, uh, the editing work on the real stuff gets done soon. Anyway, see ya! It's a fix-all, cure-all, revolution- <sighs>
get away from me! <laughs> Did Tay encounter a Phantom Ganon? Imagine burn, that. baby, burn. Imagine going to the beach <laughs> and being so. Imagine going to the beach and being so high you fucking die. <gasps> Quick, bad idea, bad idea. Oh my goodness. You had that, that was kind of stupid. Then I have to lie to it. That seemed, that really did seem like. You. So Tay, bestie, darling, can I ask you a question? Why do you have a barrel bomb attached to the end of a spear? You'll understand when the time comes. <laughs> That's all the photos I'm getting of Dark Ganon. You should right. selfie. You know what, you're right, I should. Being the bestie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like scary, like, yeah, it's another milkshake. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you die for fall damage in this game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is what is doing? Broski, where are you right. going? Oh, oh, Wait, we'll step out of the What? What is that? What do you mean below me? What? Hurt. Holy fuck! That killed you? Oh! What? Fucking died. What? Didn't even hit the ground. Bro, it went up and went. What? Anyway, screw your ancestors. I need to cook. Bro, I just want to grill. It, it's not. It's not that hard. <laughs> Don't bite me. Just grill on the ice dragon's bed. Nice. Hey, fuck. Top of the world, baby. Hashtag living my best life. I like this cutscene. Oh, how am I gonna get to that? What? This is. This way. Wait, can I. Maybe. Just maybe. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait, please. Oh my god! You have stamina recovery food. Um. Alright! We seem to be at a bit of a problem. Just let go. <laughs> Ran a random rock in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> no! Damn. Where do I go now? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why they I do that to me? The last time you touched the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Look at what I built. This is gonna get me up there. Easily All right, we're ready for blast off. <laughs> Let us launcher. go. Oh my! Oh, the whole thing's on fire! Oh yeah, that's what happens when you put a wooden shit on it. What the? Oh no! Oh no! Discovery? Oh yeah, that is the captain. Uh, hold your glider question mark? It's not working! Press B and then press 1. There. Will you cut that out? Oh, and before we go, every good car needs headlights. Let's throw uh one here. Yeah. No, no! Oh no! My car! Oh, you can mount them? Once you knock them down, yeah. Wait, you can mount a bear? <laughs> oh yeah, you can ride any deer and bears. Oh. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. I didn't mean to hurt you. What the? Where'd he go? What the heck? Where'd he go? What the? Where, did he teleport somewhere? Oh, look, there's the way out. Hey, at least he's gone. Bro just disappeared. Oh my god! Oh, that's not good. Oh! What did you think he was gonna do? Stop shooting? And escapees. Go and go! Go and go! Go and go! Yeah, uh, no. I have I well, I wish I could go that over the I do How many are Four. Fair enough. Alrighty! Congrats. <laughs> Alright. So, we going to bed. Good night. Did it. Wait. Where is bro going? Gloom Slayer? <laughs> oh, congrats. You didn't collide here. <laughs> hey, Tay? Yeah? Yeah, it's endgame stuff. Don't do it. I thought so. Thanks for telling me. Ah, the Pac-Man Bros. The Pac-Man Bros was a fan game made by my good friend, That Left Hand Man, made on itch.io. Actually, prior to this, we weren't friends at all. I just really liked his game, and I planned to review it and the creator like any of my past videos. However, after getting to know each other, I changed the review to more of a buddy-styled review, and I went all out with the visuals. I'll be honest, I think I may have shown a little bit too much enthusiasm as the video is very fast-paced and ADHD-fueled, but I will stand by this video as being one of the hardest ones to edit last year. Left did an amazing job working with me, giving me artwork sprites, and even doing custom artwork for the thumbnail of this very own video. Pac-Man is a funny little scrunkly. You should kill yourself. Like most iconic mascots, he started off humble and skyrocketed to fame, having quite the collection of games under his belt. And while we continue to get better ways to experience these old classics, I can't help but feel it's more of the same, when you consider how Pac-Man used to get weird back in the day. Mass destruction, the closure of all chocolate factories, and the banning of kittens, perhaps. That's just phase one. Yeah, so as iconic as this guy is, it's kind of funny how most of the stuff doesn't actually come from Namco themselves, but from people that make ROM packs and fan games. So for example, when you look at this Pac-Man, that wasn't made by Namco themselves, solidifying itself is more than just a cheap spin-off. Exactly! You see, wait, how'd you get in here? Tay, next time that you decide to put a fake rock in your backyard, don't put a key under it, alright? It's just... Just a tad obvious. Come on, it's not that obvious. Anyway, then you have more recent examples, like the Championship Edition D Make for NES, which started as a fan game, was later taken in by Namco, polished up by M2, and then officially released in a compilation. So that brings me to another fan game that should, in my opinion, be part of the official Pac Man titles. Made by the Left Hand Man. Yeah, me, that's me. Let's go. The Pac-Man Bros is a continuation of the classic maze-like formula many of you will know and love. Elements such as the diverse layouts of Ms. Pac-Man and the wide-scrolling stages of Pac-Man Jr. make this game feel expansive and chaotic like a true arcade sequel. So, Left, what's your favorite Pac-Man game? Honestly, in my opinion, 
probably arrangement. I think it does the best to continue on from the original franchise without going too overboard. I'd honestly say it's a better spiritual success, even more so than Championship Edition. Well, rather than being another fan game that drops Pac-Man in a random environment, Left took a more risky approach and decided to make more original characters, redesign the monsters, and tie together the game's aesthetics with the sleek Neon City look. And I'll be honest, most of the time, original characters in fan games are kinda cringe, but it's tastefully done here in my opinion. Most notable is the introduction of two new Pac-Men, Johnny and Louie, brothers whose outfits translate really well to the game. Now I'm curious, how did you come up with the setting and characters in general? So for the setting of the game, now I'm going to shout out Away From Home, and it's literally just half Earthbound and half Rhythm Heaven. So if you're interested in either of those, I highly recommend you check them out. But once you see the characters from this game and the setting, you're going to be like, yeah, this is just a copy. In my defense, he did let me use the characters for the designs. He gave me permission to do so, so I'm not that big of a fraud. As far as the names go, I'm pretty sure they were just two random names that I chose. Johnny Johnny, the stupid Johnny Johnny meme was still somewhat went popular so that's where I got that from and I remember for Louie I don't remember how we got into the conversation but a couple of my guys in discord were just talking about Elmo and I brought up the fact that he had a dad named Louie and he just he had the hottest drip of all time look at this man look at this man well just like regular Pac-Man your objective is to obviously eat all the pack dots on stage but that's easier said than done with four thugs on your tail and the ever-increasing difficulty amping up, sooner than later, you're gonna find yourself caught in the streets of Detroit getting mugged. As far as I can tell, the AI for them is still pretty much the same, which is much appreciated as someone that plays a lot of Pac-Man. So left, how did you get started in game development making the Pac-Man Bros in the first place? All right, so it's kind of a long story, but I'm going to keep it as short as possible. So basically, right, uh, I had a class in my college, so one credit semester, and it was literally the whole class. It was a coding class about just, just make something. Literally, that's it. Get in a group and just make something. What I made doesn't matter at all, uh, but what does matter is that one group made something that made the five-year-old in me cry a lot. They made Pac-Man, just like most fan games, suck. And it made me cry because what they specifically mentioned was the fact that the ghost AI was really bad. And after looking at it, yeah, it was like the most basic stuff. There was no strategy or anything. It's like a three-year-old coming at you with a, with a blindfold. So basically, I got mad about it. I didn't mention it to them, but I'm just like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go home tonight. And I'm gonna do their entire project in one sitting just to show them how you make a real Pac-Man game. All I did was just look up one video within eight hours. I think I stayed up till like four in the morning doing it, but I was, I was devoted to showing this kid that I don't even remember what he looks like, that I was better than him. Well, you know what they say, if you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. One small change I found to be quite challenging and unique was how Red goes into this rage mode when there's like a few pellets left on stage. But Left cranked this anger to 11 and now makes a beeline for you no matter what. Good news is that not only the ghost juiced, but you are too. Look at this. So what are you waiting for? Download the Pac-Man Bros today for 30 easy payments of $0. This special internet offer is not available in stores or Steam. Just call or text 933-336-688777 to obtain your free copy. But wait! If you like and subscribe now, we'll throw in the second unreleased game for free. That's right, two games for the price of one. Side effects may include constipation, skin rash or dermatitis, diarrhea, dizziness, drowsiness, dry mouth, wet mouth, blood pressure increased, blurred vision while smoking crack, change in walking imbalance, chest pain or discomfort, chills, thrills, thriller, Michael Jackson, dark urine, difficult urination, easy urination, dizziness or lightheadedness when getting up suddenly because you suck. That's right, ripped straight out of Dark Souls, we got the dodge roll. Wait, what's the name of this move again? <laughs> Well, thanks to my big mouth, it's apparently called the Detroit Dodger now. Yeah, this move is pretty much what it looks like, so instead of dodging by jumping, all you gotta do, spin up in a ball and shoot yourself forward, 
and you're good. You can look as cool as you want, but uh, this isn't something that you want to spam all the time. Not only can you not eat pellets while rolling, but you also bounce off the walls like an idiot. Yeah, so that pretty much leads to a high risk, high reward mechanic that you know I'm all for in any type of game. So now that we covered the basics, what makes this Pac-Man fan game different from the others in your opinion? So I don't know if you've noticed, but I decided let's just do some rules where it's like there's only one way to get extra lives. There's only like a certain amount of levels and you can't choose them. They're all RNG, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I want it to be faithful. By putting rules, you make it more like a sequel to the original games and something that's kind of think of it. I like to describe it as like the Sonic Mania of Pac-Man in a way. I also really love the details added to this game. Uh, first up is the fruits. In most Pac-Man games, it will either be static in one place or hopping along a path like Miss Pac-Man. But what's noticeable in this game is that not only do they move along a path, but when moving over other pellets, they get converted into those big or fat pellets. And anyone that's played Arrangement knows that this variation slows you down considerably, but it's worth more points. And speaking of Arrangement, this game also supports simultaneous co-op. <laughs> <laughs> you loser! You're so lonely! Wait, 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 wait. You're gonna play it with me! <laughs> so, considering we had to use Parsec to play together, the experience was actually pretty good. It makes the game easier in some regards, but it also makes it all the more exciting when the only thing between you and a game over is your friend frantically trying to finish the Pac-Man letters to bring you back to life. <laughs> you better bring me back to life like I did for you! I got the N-word pass. Also, another change, as we mentioned earlier, is how the lives work. Rather than reaching a point threshold to gain an extra life, it's now relegated to these Pac-Man letters at the bottom. If you catch them and fill out all the letters, then you finally gain an extra life. Yes! We're back, baby! We're back! It's, we've never been more back than before! Pac is black. While it sounds like this whole extra lives thing can be cheesed, it really can't, because there's only about a 50% chance for a letter to appear on only one of the ghosts at a time. And when you get to the higher levels, forget about it. I gotta say, my favorite part is getting mugged. <laughs> Who doesn't love getting your shoes stolen in the streets of Detroit? I know I do! So, are there any hidden details you'd like to show us about your game? One thing that is hidden are two audio things. One of them being that when you die, it's the same sound effect, or I tried to replicate it, for when you lose a battle in Earthbound. And also, for eating ghosts, just pay attention and listen to this. <laughs> A little off-script thing I just thought of at the last second. So, all the ghosts are named in the game. Why is Clyde different? Why is he called Jeff now? I don't know if you've noticed this a lot, but they really like messing up Clyde's name a lot. So, in some games, he's just called something different. In some games, they mess up his name with Blinky, etc., etc. I wanted to kind of go with the trend, and uh, so his name is Jeff now. Why is his name Jeff? I don't know. So what would you say is the hardest part when making this game? There's a lot of hard things to a game. But for me, it's even doing it in general because I'm never motivated. So, well, do you have any future plans for this game? As of right now, probably not unless people really, really, really want me to do more, which I don't think I really have the audience for that. Stuff like this isn't easy to make, but what's presented here is honestly really fun. And there you have it, the Pac-Man Bros. A fun spin on the classic Pac-Man formula that looks good enough to be official. So with that said, where can we find you in the future if we ever want to find you or your games again left? You guys can find me on the Funny Bird app. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. It's called, I think, Twitter. And you can also find some games I make on Itch. Usually whenever I do a game jam, it'll go there. Well, I'm actually glad we have a way to find you, unlike other game developers I've tried to contact in the years past. One thing I want to say before the video ends is that I definitely want to give out a shout out to Cruz Elroy. He worked on Annalyn, and he was kind of the one that inspired me to kind of get back into work on this and get motivated in time for Sage 2022. Not only is it inspiring in the fact that he taught me that people still care about arcade games to date, but I'm pretty sure he also made the game in Game Maker, which is great. Game Maker Nation rise up, by the way. Annalyn! Amazing game. Um, I need to review that someday. Well, thank you all for watching, and as always, stay, stay lefty!
No, stay foxy. Stay lefty. Stay foxy. Stay lefty. No, stay foxy, you Do idiot. Do not make me come over there and beat you to death. This is I my swear. video. I swear. I'm not. I don't care, you. dude. It's about me. Reviewing every version of Pac-Man Championship Edition was meant to be a short break from the intense action that was the Pac-Man Bros. You see, Pac-Man CE, uh, this whole entire series, it's just some of my favorite games. And while the video didn't do too good, view-wise, I'm happy to see that the few people that did watch it actually got into the games. And honestly, that's all I could ask for. New fans of a game I really love. Okay, so I'm really sorry for talking about Pac-Man again, but I cannot get this yellow devil out of my mind no matter how hard I try. Friends and longtime viewers will know I'm a huge fan of Pac-Man and will not hesitate to blab about my favorite games. One particular series I tend to see a lot of confusion on is the Championship series. And for good reason. The series is like the new Super Mario Bros. of the Pac-Man franchise. But while the games may look similar, there's plenty of differences, changes, and upgrades that set these apart. So how many versions of Pac-Man Championship Edition do you think exist? Two? Maybe three? Well, I'm happy to say there are five, mostly, unique versions, and I'm not referring to the ports like the PSP, 3DS, JM2E, and Roku version. We'll make a video on the ports another day. Today, I want to give a brief overview on each of the sequels and what they feature and give my own personal recommendations at the end. So sit back and relax, because the pack is back. First up was the original Pac-Man Championship Edition, released in 2007 on the Xbox 360. To say this game was popular is a massive understatement, as Microsoft and Namco put a lot of money up to show this isn't your grandfather's Pac-Man game. Taking advantage of the new format, which was widescreen HD television, Remember when 720p was considered HD? There are some notable elements you want to pay attention to for the first entry. So what does the first game feature? Well, there's six maps in total, with Championship being the main mode, and one music track playing throughout all of them. Gameplay revolves around you eating all the pack dots and fruit on one side to advance to the other side of stage, and thus advance further in the game in general. The more you eat without dying, the faster you go. And as a result, the amount of pellets eaten multiplies in point value. With that in mind, your objective is to go for the highest score within the time limit, and that's all. So in terms Clyde can understand, it's basically Pac-Man with a timer, you eat a lot, and you go as fast as possible. The second game in the series was not Championship Edition 2, but actually Championship Edition Deluxe, or DX for short. Released in 2010 and later 2013 as a free upgrade, this version is arguably the best one among fans and critics for good reason. It took a good game and added more to it. Similar to how Mario Kart 8 Deluxe blows the original Mario Kart 8 out of the water, this is what CEDX does. So what's different? We got a new look, a banger soundtrack, roughly 15 brand new mazes, Facebook integration, which is required to 100% the game. Oh, brother. And some quality of life features, like the slow-mo, which kicks in if you're about to die and lets you make quick last-second decisions. And bombs, that launch the ghost back if you're in a pinch. <laughs> Eventually, you'll pass some sleeping ghosts, which will tag behind Pac-Man and form trains you can later eat, making for a ton of points. There's also a bigger emphasis on speed, as now the more you eat, the faster you go, and the higher your multiplier goes, shown by the speed meter and trail respectively. Lest I forget to mention the plethora of missions and modes to keep you busy if you're not much of a high score hunter. Again, there's so much here that the original looks like a tech demo now. So is it possible to top perfection? No. Released in 2016, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 is technically the third game in the series, but is a follow-up to the first game. Mechanics from the original make a return with the addition of new maps, music, and an adventure mode, which is basically a glorified mission mode with the occasional boss. But now there's some new tweaks to the formula. So what's different? Somehow the game gets even faster, and to compensate, they added a break. This is useful for when you know a ghost is going to go one way, but instead of waggling back and forth like an idiot, you can hit the brakes and let them on their merry way. Oh my God. Most important is how you progress from stage to stage. Instead of eating all the dots to make the fruit appear, you have to eat just enough to fill this bar at the bottom. And once you hit the threshold, eating it takes you to the next stage, which looks pretty cool. And when using a bomb, you fly to the center of the screen instead of the ghost. 
Also, the slow-mo when in danger has been removed. So, depending on the difficulty, now the ghost will bounce off you a few times, get angry, and then give chase. You what? Unlike DX, the trains made by passing sleeping ghosts don't follow you, but now they follow their own pattern. And once a power pellet is consumed, they have to be eaten at the front of the train. And any other way has you bouncing off. There's a big emphasis on dynamic camera angles, and while they are cool, they can be a bit disorienting. Adventure mode, as stated earlier, is basically a glorified mission mode, and once you beat enough stages, you get to face off against a boss stage. The boss honestly doesn't do much other than insta-kill you if you take too long to beat it, so it's more of a visual spectacle than anything, but it's pretty satisfying. Oh my god. Uh, Pac-Man, that was my family- Released in 2018, Pac-Man CE2 Plus was graced upon the world. Similar to how Championship Edition was outdone by CEDX due to the sheer amount of content, CE2 is now succeeded by the Plus version, which is now a Switch-exclusive game. Yes, you heard me right. A game that was birthed due to Xbox Live Arcade and funded by Microsoft has now ended up as a Switch-exclusive. Get that out of here! True, you're not missing out on much if you already own the game, but what's so good about this version? Well, for starters, when you boot up the game, you're greeted with Championship Edition 2 and the Plus version right off the bat. CE2 is mostly unchanged with some small UI tweaks, but the Plus version is what makes this stand on its own. The theme of 2 Plus is teamwork and cooperation. There's only six mazes in total, and while they are reused, they have been retooled to be more fun in this format. On top of that, there's even more amazing music, racing the OSTs count to 23. I mean, come on, this is probably the most hypest thing I've ever heard. Plus, the options have been tweaked. Rather than choosing a preset for a stage, you can mix and match just about everything. And the addition of the dots bopping to the beat of the music is pretty cool in my opinion. And yes, once again, the rules have been changed slightly. Now when you eat a power pellet, not only do you have to hit the ghost from the front, but also the back. The bosses have been revamped to be more of a threat than some omnipresent jerk watching you like in CE2. Eat all the dots, get the power pellet, bash the boss, then rinse and repeat. Oh hey, and the slow-mo effect from CEDX makes a return. As someone who's played this solo and with a real human, that being my younger brother who is just as good as Pac-Man as me, IRL co-op is the best way to play, and it's a shame there's no online modes because there's even more unique nuances in the co-op mode that's not possible in the single-player co-op mode, like the ability to save a friend if they get caught since you don't instantly die. Now, how do you top a game that has just about everything? Well, you strip it all away, of course. Released in 2020, the Namco collection of games was first sold in Japan, then worldwide, shortly after they heard me banging on their office doors. Commonly referred to as the CED make, or Famicom version, CENES stands apart from the others in more ways than one. This is technically a demake of the first CE game featuring only two mazes via normal and extra mode. And to well-informed viewers, I know this game existed over a decade ago as a fan game, but I'm talking about its official release. This could be personal preference, but the less is more approach with this game makes it a genuine blast to play. There's no trains, brakes, or other advanced mechanics. Just eat as much as you can, as fast as you can. Hey! This got them fake! I gotta get out of here! I used to be addicted to this game when it first came out. High score hunting trying to set the world record. And while I think I'm close, I know I'm not that guy. To make it worth your while, there's achievements like CE, and completing them will grant you some completionist goodies. I won't spoil them, but they're all pretty cool for an NES game. So what makes this version so special? While the gameplay is more simplified than even the original CE version, its charm lies in the gameplay that demands to be mastered. I can't go into too much detail, but when you eat a power pellet, there's an invisible timer for how long the ghost stays scared. Simple enough, right? Well, if that invisible timer is still active when you eat another power pellet, you can theoretically keep this going indefinitely, and all the ghosts you eat will keep multiplying in value until they are maxed out at 3200 points each. 
So now the game is a big risk reward. Do I finish the stages and move on? Or do I fight to keep this combo going, risking it all for another juicy 3200 points? All in all, I can't praise this game enough, so all I can say is, please get it. So now that we covered all the mainline games, let's discuss my recommendations as to which game you should play or show up to others who are new to the series. CE is an amazing start. The game is simple and extremely faithful while being flashy and fun for the modern age. I would recommend this to people wanting to get into modern Pac-Man games or haven't played one in a long time. Long story short, it won't overwhelm a new player. This game is available on the Pac-Man Museum Plus collection on just about every platform. Pros? It's simple and extremely faithful while being modern. Cons? It's very light on content and gets a bit repetitive if that's all you have. CEDX is usually hailed as the best version, and for good reason. There's more everything! The addition of Ghost Trains adds another layer of skill to the mix, and quality of life features like bombs and slow-mo help keep the pace of the game going. Spectacle aside, this is the best version with lots of content to keep you busy for a long time. This game is available on Steam and is usually always on sale. Pros, it amps up the skill and there's lots of freedom. It's pretty much peak. Cons, it's a bit messy and it's a pain to unlock everything. CE2 is very different from the past games and I would recommend this to a more intermediate player due to how many rules have been changed. The game is much faster, flashier, and easier to play. And while this one has the most content, don't let that fool you. The real fun here is the score attack mode. This game is available on all modern platforms, but I would not suggest the Switch version. Pros, much faster and flashier. Cons, sacrifices freedom for very strict gameplay. 2 Plus is a minor upgrade, but it's the best version of CE2 based on how complete it is. It has all the music, stages, and improved UI to make for a good time. Again, I would only recommend this to players who don't own CE2 on PC or past consoles already. The Plus content is very minimal, and if you don't have a friend to play with, you're essentially missing out on half the fun. But don't let that stop you. Just remember that at the time of this video, it's a Switch exclusive, but let's hope and pray it comes to another platform in the future. Pros, it's the best version of the game, but I would only recommend it to new players who don't own it already. Cons, very minimal amount of content added to the game, and if you don't have a friend to play this, you're not going to get the full enjoyment out of it. CENES is my personal favorite recommendation out of all these games. It's hard to put my finger on it, but when you play it for yourself, there's this aha moment of wow, Pac-Man feels good to control. Not to mention the power pellets last a tad bit longer, leading you to get some crazy combos. It's extremely fast and refined, with a big emphasis on routing and freedom. It mimics the CE version without sacrificing its core design, but rather stands on its own. And it works on a real Famicom. The only thing holding it back is that it's only legally purchasable in the collection, but if you know how to use the internet, you can extract the ROM and put it in an emulator or EverDrive. Pros? Extremely fast and refined with a big emphasis on routing and freedom. Mimics the original game, but keeps adding on to its own to make it stand by itself. Cons, only legally available via the Namcot collection, which is like 20 bucks, usually goes down to 10 on the sale, but the ROM itself is easy to find online. It also has a built-in rewind, so catching cheaters is kind of hard to spot. And that's my summary of all the mainline Championship Edition games. I hope I did a good job of explaining this, as I really wanted people to see why the series is so beloved to me, and show the cool nuances between different versions. There's a lot of details I had to skip out on for the sake of time, but I do plan to cover each of these games individually in the future. So, let me know if you'd be interested in that sort of thing. With that, I'd like to say thank you all for watching, and remember, stay foxy. Next up is one of my more unique videos, where I just talk about a theory I have. So, how long was the events of Sonic 1? That's a fun question I actually wanted to cover way back since like 2020, 2019 maybe? but I could never do it as I lacked the resources or polish to get my thoughts across. Needless to say, the video did pretty decent for something more slower paced, and I'm glad a lot of the comments seem to agree with my observation. Thumbnail work is a mesh between this background and this version of Sonic I edited together, and to be honest, I'm quite proud of it. Seeing as the next few videos are taking a while to make and nobody seems to really care about Pac-Man, 
I thought I'd take a break and talk about my favorite boy in blue. Well, I'll talk about him another day. That's right, we're talking about Sonic, and there's nobody else online that loves him more than me. Not scientifically possible. As a kid, the world of Sonic always fascinated me. It's funny how the naivety of being young helps you appreciate more of your favorite characters since you don't fully understand what's going on. I used to be one of those kids who would think about what characters did in their spare time. Did Sonic have to constantly fight off Robotnik? Did Sonic travel to other parts of the world, and how long did his adventures take? Nowadays, we have answers to most, if not all, those questions, and a lot of the guesswork is fleshed out in comics, movies, and animated shorts we get with Mania, Adventures, and Origins. But that last question, how long did his adventures take, was one I always thought about but never really entertained due to thinking how stupid it was. But after bringing up that question in Discord, a lot of my friends said it was a great topic. So today we're going to break it down zone by zone. I think it's also good to mention that just because you can beat Act 1 of Green Hill in 20 seconds, and the world record has the game beaten in like 14 minutes, it obviously doesn't mean that's how long it took Sonic in-universe. Think of it like a film. Just because the first Sonic movie is an hour and 39 minutes long, that doesn't mean the entire movie actually happened in that time frame. There are cuts from one scene to another that can span minutes, hours, or even days. The movie, much like the game, is showing us the most relevant and fun parts of his adventure. So the time it takes Sonic to leave Green Hill and get into Marble Zone could be a lot longer than we think. And lastly, some might reason, why would it take Sonic so long to reach Robotnik in the first place? My reasoning for that is quite simple. Sonic is busy saving his animal buddies along the way. It's clear that while Sonic could catch up to him in no time flat, there's no point in stopping Robotnik if all his friends are turned into robots. And while a fair amount of people hate Lost World, I think it's accurate to Sonic's personality to save his animal buddies first. Although I do find it funny that technically he never saves them in the intro, so Roger's take is kind of the most accurate. I'll save those animals! Yes! I saved the animals! Oh, my face. Sorry for the long explanation, but I just want you to understand my train of thought for this video. I can imagine Sonic getting some food, hey don't judge him, he's an Aldi's man, and then going for a pre-afternoon jog to say hi to his animal buddies. As he runs through the tropical side of South Island, he admires the checkered hills, palm trees, waterfalls, and long open stretches where he can really let loose with his speed. Green Hill Zone, no matter its iteration, always looks beautiful. And in the case for Sonic 1, it's safe to assume this zone would take place at noon when the sun is at its highest. This is evident by how bright and vibrant the location is, with the water glimmering, shadows for bits of ground recessed in walls, and overhang of the lush yet neatly trimmed grass that casts shadows on the side of the ground. I know I said noon a moment ago, but it could be closer to like 11.30 due to the angle of which the light hits the environment. If you know anything about lighting and shading and artwork, you can see it in play right here. All in all, it's a quick little afternoon romp for the hedgehog. So let's mark Green Hill as taking place at noon. The transition from Green Hill to Marble Zone must have taken a few hours, as by this point in the game, the sky has darkened, but not too much. I can imagine Sonic, still fresh from his current adventure, starting to notice more caution must be taken when treading these ruins that house lava, tight spaces, and a dungeon full of traps. While there is no middle ground between zones, I can imagine the palm trees becoming few in number, with pine taking its place, the fresh scent of the ocean air being replaced with a more smoky one, and the ground while still covered in grass, has become a lot less stable. I can comfortably set this time around the late afternoon, probably 5pm, but considering you spend most of the act underground, I wouldn't blame you for thinking this took place at night. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the grass, because this is the last time Sonic will touch any in the game. And with that said, let's put Marble Zone at 5pm. I like it, but I like the consideration that he did. Guess who's back? Who's back? By this point in the game, Sonic has left the ruins of Marble Zone and is now in the mountainous region of Spring Yard Zone. 
With the purple glow of an urban environment, rocky mountains, and thick green bushes at its base, there's a lot to take in. While it may not be intentional, it's cool to see the same mountains from Marble Zone, but now significantly closer as Sonic progresses onward. Looking at the purple sky, yellowish-orange clouds, and hard shadows on the mountains, it's safe to assume we're approaching the evening. More specifically, the sunset at around 7pm. While I would love to calculate the geographical positioning of South Island and go into depth with its environment, I don't have time for that. So here's the TLDR. The fact there are no snow levels in Sonic 1 and how most continents in the south are close to the equator, I'd like to think it's a fairly warm region with its sunsets being around 7 o'clock. I tried using parts of South America for reference and eventually found a sunrise to sunset chart, but after spending an embarrassingly long time reading into this, it honestly doesn't matter. All I can say is Sonic Origins, while flawed in some aspects, does a great job of visualizing this in the island viewer, clearly putting South Island, well, in the south. Geographical rant aside, it's only fair we put Spring Yard Zone at 7pm. Making his way out of the suburban mountainside, Sonic now finds himself in the ruins of an underground cavern littered with the ruins of an ancient civilization. There's plenty of traps akin to Marble Zone, and now Sonic's biggest threat, water. Now we face a small roadblock with this zone. We never see the surface. Everything in Labyrinth Zone is underground, and I'm not going to try to explain where the light sources come from. All I can say is, if we read between the lines and use some context clues with the next zone, we can make a safe estimate on what time to place this zone. So, while it may not make sense now, I'm going to put Labyrinth Zone at 9pm. So with that, onward to... Starlight Zone lives up to its name right off the bat with a beautiful starry sky as a backdrop and a highway over top the urban environment. We can see how Sonic has progressed on his journey by examining his surroundings once again. The purple mountains of Marble Zone later became the ones we see in Spring Yard, and the city in the distance of Spring Yard later became the Starlight Zone. No doubt with a starry sky like this, it's safe to assume it's currently around 11pm or midnight, and I'm sure getting through Labyrinth Zone was no easy feat and it took Sonic a hot minute to get through. Earlier I said Labyrinth was set at 9pm, and my reasoning is the difference in time from Spring Yard's sunset to Starlight's night sky, which would nestle this zone comfortably in the evening range. Now with Starlight out of the way, that leaves us with... Scrap Rain Zone takes place in the vicinity of Robotnik's headquarters. I can imagine Sonic leaving the bright and cheerful city limits of Starlight Zone, only to witness the sky turn an ugly brown as factories take up more and more of the remaining space. With smog in the sky, red lights of surveillance, and plenty of unexpected traps, this is one abomination you want to steer clear of. What's notable is how Act 1 takes place outside, and Act 2 takes place inside of Robotnik's factory. Again, a nice bit of environmental storytelling showing Sonic's progress thus far. So what time does Scrap Brain take place in? Well, at first I was conflicted when I first thought of this video. I wanted to have it set at midnight. But after analyzing the other levels and how Starlight takes place at the latest point in the evening, I'm confident in putting Scrap Brain around the 5-6am to 6 AM time frame, right as the sun is about to rise. My reason for this? Well, after looking at the environment, the outside of Scrap Brain is obviously very dark, but there's still enough scattered light to show the silhouettes of buildings. That's because of the pollution in the air blocking out the sunlight, aka smog. I mean, after looking up some photos of smoggy cities online, it's actually quite eerie how well they've managed to capture the look and feel. Sure, this could be due to graphical limitations, but I like to think Sonic's pulled an all-nighter, and determined to avenge his friends unjustly captured, he runs into the final zone and puts a stop to Robotnik once and for all. Standing victorious, Sonic looks over the horizon watching Eggman go down in flames. So this is Sonic, bro, you're too close to the impact zone, stop looking your go- <laughs> And with that said, we can put Scrap Brain at 5am. But just because we beat the game doesn't mean time has stopped yet. Once we get back to the end, we see Sonic running to Green Hill and letting the emeralds free while that sneaky 7th one was busy in a bar or something. One thing to note is how it's clearly daytime when Sonic returns, implying that after he beat Robotnik, he ran non-stop all the way back to be with his animal buddies at home. So to recap, where does this leave us in our time frame? 
Well, due to the bright and sunny afternoon, Green Hill Zone takes place at noon. Marble Zone being a few hours later in the early evening takes place at 5 p.m. The beautiful sunset skies of Spring Yard Zone land us at 7 p.m. and We Concluded Labyrinth takes place at 9 p.m. Starlight with its beautiful skies takes place at midnight and Scrap Brain with its smoggy skies scattering the light puts it at 5 a.m. Then after that, Sonic runs all the way back to Green Hill at the same time he started the previous day. This means the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 took roughly 24 hours or one day for Sonic to beat. Now I understand my headcanon has its fair share of flaws, biases, and guesstimations, but I felt compared to share my silly little thoughts to anyone who cared enough to listen. If you have your own idea of how long the adventure took to beat, I'd love to read it in the comments below. And while this was not intended to be a series, if you want to see me do a time frame of Sonic 2, then just let me know. It was fun to replay Sonic 1, pay attention to the details, and look into one of my favorite games from a different angle. A huge thanks to all my Patreon and Kofi members for helping me make these videos, and remember, stay foxy. Mario vs. Luigi Online in a nutshell is another attempt of me turning a stream into a highlights video. However, I worked extra hard to keep it engaging and did a lot of editing to make it feel like its own thing. Sadly, this is actually one of the worst performing videos of the year, but those that did see it seemed to really like it. Another thing to note is the original video is actually in 60fps. While this version isn't, it's just as good. Thumbnail artwork was sketched out in MS Paint and once again made by Pi and then further edited by me. I gotta hand it to her, she nailed the energy perfectly. <gasps> the gods have smiled upon me today. It's a new day. No! <laughs> yeah, that's not fun here, right? Oh, I, I can't myself. do this. It's killing over. It's not good. Who was invincible? Uh, three people right now. This is bad. Can we say see? We stay away from me. <laughs> Brazil. I'm tiny but invincible. So no head? What? You know what? Maybe I should just play keep away for this last minute. <laughs> maybe if I just sit and observe, maybe I'll get one. Ah, oh, no, I, like the... I know what I must do. I will shred this universe down to its last atom. And then, with the stones you've collected for me, Create a new one. <gasps> no! Oh, you! I believe I need I can't believe this. I'm Why? going to lose because of you. You're going to let Nova win. Come on, baby, come on. Oh, Blue doesn't have any. Uh, I got murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Am I glad he's frozen in there and that we're out here? No! I refuse to be frozen! Hey, you have so hey, what's up? I need to win, you don't understand! Right, I have a reputation everyone, to uphold! Everyone target Tay and stuff yeah. Yeah. No, you will not target me! I'm sorry, Soul, you can't have that! I can't let anyone win! I'm sorry, Nova! You too, buddy! I'm sorry, buddy! I'm sorry, guys! I'm so sorry, I have yeah. to win! I have Come to back. do this! Come back! They'll take away my gamer card if I lose again. What All right, I gotta keep. Help, help. I gotta play keep away for thirty seconds. Let's go, baby. Come on. Where's everyone? Where's everyone? I don't everyone? have any stars. Come on, baby. Do I go for it? Nah, I'm not. I'm not that greedy. I may be stupid, but I'm not an idiot. Whoa! I am going to Come go on, keep to away. John keep away. Mario's keep away. house. Yes, let's go. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Do I need to call the doctor Whoa. again, Tay? Oh, hi, Blue! Oh, hi, Tay. I'm genuinely surprised this game has flushed out controllers. God dang it! Y'all yeah. are, like, insane! Get away from me! I need a fire. I need fire. I literally need some fire. Thanks, Soul! Thanks, buddy! I love you so much for that! You owe me. Get over I'll here. do anything. Get a over hug, here. a kiss? Get oh my here. god, we were so insane. What the fuck? <laughs> 
reasons why I like skies. There's so many nice points of elevation. You know, it's not flat. You're flat. All right. Let's see. Hey, Cybershoom, I see you again, buddy. Cybershoom? Oh, you're going to the semifinals in your Pokemon tournament? Wait, wait. Oh, nice. I'm the host. You better win. What? You better win for me, Thaz. Why did I become All right. the host? Uh, what, 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 maps, what map do you guys want? Wait, what the? Huh? I'm, I'm the host. Hey! I'm the host now. The... I'm the captain What the heck? <laughs> what? what the heck? What? What? All right. What? Yeah, well, since I'm taking over the case, right now. Chat, do not encourage. Do not encourage this behavior. If I get kicked, hey. I swear to God. See Do not put See you later. <gasps> no! What do you mean by that? Well, who, who, yeah, blue wait, hey, who dies? Thanks for the free. Bro, 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 three dollars and says shrink them. All right, let's do it, baby. Uh, hold on, which layer are you on? There you go. Let me back. Make me bigger. No, let's do this, boys. I plan on winning. Whoa. Well, Wait, what Yubi, the? Bump. For the three Can potatoes. shrink is again? Shrink Are you sure? Ass. I'll do it again. All right. Every what? donation I'm makes it smaller. Again? Wait. Oh wait. You know. I'll, you know. I'll do it. Really I'll do it. I'll, I will do it. There you go. I'm her. I did it to Soul this time. I made Soul tiny. <gasps> God has blessed me on this day. Oh. Oh. Dice, come here, Fanny. Dice, come on. I want you to chill. <laughs> God, that was close. You almost got me. You almost nailed me on that one. No! That was... Wait, what the? That was mine! Huh? What the? Mega? No, give me Summer, me Summer you have the Mega! Summer, you have the Mega! Activate it! It was a... You idiot! I... You idiot! I took it from you! You like scow! You're the dude! Oh. <laughs> okay, oh. who has five stars? Oh, oh you have to. Oh, stealing from the poor as usual, huh, Tay? I don't mind it one bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right! Run! Oh, shit. Ooh. Well, oh my god. Thanks Shrink yourself, yourself too, Tay. Tay. You're not free from the Pharaoh's curse. Yourself, what? Tay. I can't believe this. I, I can't believe I actually got to freaking shrink myself now. I hate you so much. I said don't hit me, Funky! Summer? I'm so sorry, Busty. What? I meant I to say Bestie. If I was Busty, that solved like half of my dysphoria problems. <laughs> Real. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Nope, nope, nope. Dip, duck, and dive, baby. Dip, duck, and dive, baby. Let's go. You threw me into a goddamn oh. pit, you oh. traitor. Well, sorry. Skill issue. <laughs> You froze me and threw me into a pit. How is that a skill issue? It's called skill issue. Don't get simply don't get frozen. Funky, dodge, you dodge the ball. You funky. Just because I drew art of you does not mean you are exempt. No, my ice. Get no, idiot. idiot. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. My mom. Yes. Oh. Hey, come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you just grab it back immediately every single time. <laughs> what? That hit Let's go, baby! Oh, oh. Dude is giddy, holy. Let's go! Oh, okay. Alright, well, yeah. me. What? How do you do the dive thing? Yes! Okay. <laughs> and I didn't lose a single life! Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, I'm tiny. Whoa! <laughs> I'm tiny Rick! Oh. I'm tiny Rick! Bump. Oh, God. Oh, no, I want that. Uh. Hey, you bastard. Thanks, bestie! Bring oh, that no. sweet booty over here! That's how we were best buckaroos. Uh, how do I use my reserve item? Ha, no! I jumped into it myself. What am I doing? Crazy that you're doing this when the police found evidence of cannibalism in your home in 2013. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! 
<laughs> That's right, I remember that. Remember when he also did NFTs? That was crazy. No, you can't have that. You can't have that. Bad, uh, that, bad. That's, that's no fun allowed. Nice. That's not very nice. Our Q's going on NFT. Oh, why did I do that? I don't even have... Oh, wait. No, I was gonna... No! He... My booty! Oh, yes! <laughs> Your booty, huh? No! The game lagged! Are you freaking kidding me? I got robbed because of the lag! Oh, yeah, it was the controller. All the sun was in my eyes. Oh, um, I, I literally freaking have the Popello suit. No! No! No, 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 no. <laughs> You had it. <laughs> I did it! Let's oh, go! Shit. Let's go! Yo, host advantage, oh, host God. advantage. <laughs> Oh, fuck. What are those things called when you get an emergency alert on your phone? Amber alert? Yeah, that's it. Who went missing? Say what? What, did you go missing again? No, someone, uh, apparently a convicted murderer just escaped the jail that I'm like two streets down from. So... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, it was like, stay then inside, you, wait. lock your doors. So... Stay inside, lock your doors. Um... Bro, I I'm not sure, uh... Hmm. Oh, apparently there's an ongoing shooting, too. <laughs> Dice, do you hear that? What? Dice. What? My door's oh on my god. Side, you silly Billy. <laughs> Dice, oh my god. It's the hash slinging! The, the thrash slinging! The, the bash flinging! The, no. the gnash thinging! The, the, the rash tingling! <laughs> Oh, God, that was close. Grandpa still got it. What? Woo wee! Let me tell you, boys and girls, this was quite the adventure. I, I like to tell you that the, you know, maybe the real points we made were the friends we made along the way. I just like to share a nugget of knowledge with all my friends out there, my children, my great grandchildren, uh, my great grandpappy children. Ooh, what that? What is that? Woo! That thing, woo! I haven't had a suck like this since. Pokemon Close Combat. Oh man. This was my best performing video of 2023, garnering around 3,000 views at the end of the year. It feels like an accumulation of storytelling, gameplay, and a solid review that ties it all together. One thing I had fun experimenting with was animating the sprites in those cutscenes and trying to go for a somewhat cinematic approach. The thumbnail was originally sketched in MS Paint, and I had the wonderful Pi finish it up, but I was so pressed for time, I couldn't edit it into the final thumbnail, so I just went for a still frame in the video. Just know, she did a fantastic job brushing this in three days, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> What you just saw was me winning the grand finals of the Pokemon Close Combat Tournament. That's right, when it comes to fighting games, I'm a pretty big deal. I haven't lost a single match yet. Oh, you want a source on that tournament? Oh no, I didn't lose 2-0. Uh, uh, no way. Darn it. Oh! <laughs> Not like this! Alright, fine, I suck, and I was one of the first people to lose. Doesn't mean I'm giving up, though. Made by Battle Capacity, Pokemon Close Combat is, obviously, a Pokemon fighting game. With the main gimmick being that all the Pokemon are fighting types only. And I'll admit, prior to playing this game, I was not the biggest fan of fighting games. You see, when I played Close Combat, something just clicked. And I was determined to be the best Heracross player ever. Go, 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 go. Alright, it's time. It's time! <laughs> it's across! It's across! 
approach me. Nope. 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 Oh, you're annoying. Nope. All right, and to finish it off, approach me. The Discord server that hosts this game is honestly a really nice and helpful place, and I'd have to thank cool peeps like V, Cass, Viker, and Tiger for being there to help train me. It's people like this that make getting into new games enjoyable in the first place. Actually, scratch Tiger off that friendly list. Bro plays a nasty Toxicroak, and after like a dozen losses, I finally managed to like get past them and his stupid tricks, and we had like the craziest game. I love you, bro, but oh my god. <laughs> bro said, let's my game's have it. Bro's like, I want my victory to sink in. <laughs> oh my god. Game, like, oh my god. That... I'm not gonna lie. Around them. <gasps> oh my god, what's the grab? What's that desktop picture, bro? Oh my god. I really hope they had taunts to it. Oh my god, he slammed me twice! He just. Oh my god. Get him. Oh my god. Get him. Oh no. You got the HP. The pressure. You got the HP the advantage this time. You got looped by grabs. Nice. <laughs> the pressure was crazy. I love that. Yeah, well, don't run now. Don't run now. Come on. We had something. Don't run. <laughs> don't <laughs> run. Heracross's back throw. He's scared. Oh. Wow, Toxicroak is weak in the HP department. <laughs> <laughs> Still getting burnt, huh? <laughs> it's the dirty bubble in all his dirty roundness. <laughs> oh, no. Absolutely. It's a few touches uh -oh. and it's over. Uh oh. Yeah, he ran away! Oh, he ran yeah. away! He ran away! He ran away! You can do it! You can win! Come on. Oh no! Oh, oh no, you fool! Stay back! The point! Ooh. Watch the point now! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. Actually, you know what, while I'm here, let's talk about the unique characters, and then I'll make fun of them. To start, let's look at the wiki for Toxicroak. Ah, yes. Toxicroak is one of those keep-away zoner characters that excels in keeping you far away, obviously. With plenty of spacing options, poison that damages opponents over time, and a busted super, this is one frog you don't want to jump at. So, you know what the average match is like? All they do is spam 5B and 1B like there's some sort of brain-dead Spongebob bubble blower. They hit the cha-cha slide in hopes of building meter early. And then when you finally have your opponent in the corner, what do they do? <laughs> this move absolutely sucks. You can't block it or parry it, and to make it worse, you might as well be trapped in there for an eternity. I'm serious. You know what Toxico mains like to do when you're bubbled? They taunt, leave, they go get, like, coffee, walk on the beach, make reservations for dinner, eat a meal, take a nap. Also, Toxicroak has dry skin, so I know y'all got some ashy elbows. And then they come back with enough time to sit there with that stupid grin, sitting back there, and then they just type GG's in chat. Overall, 10 out of 10 character. They're toxic, they're funny, and I love them. So, so, you also have the same destiny. Kera 
飛行の一つをついた<音声>なんと政権の使いでやはり奴つ僕との剣は無敵だ Next up is Beware. First off, all I can say is don't let the looks fool you. If you haven't seen what this thing is capable of in Sun and Moon, then you're in for a world of hurt. If you like the thought of being a tanky grappler who likes cornering people into bad decisions with high damage output and some insane bulk, then Beware is for you. <laughs> These dopey looking Unga Bunga Braid Dead Charmin Ultra Soft players, known as Beware mains, only know 6B, 3A for pressure, and 6C. I know you guys are grapplers, but please, how about you use that grapple to get a grip on reality and stop bullying me? No! Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know the input for the super. Thank God some of the bugs were patched because in 7A, this was fixed. Scared bear? Come on, build a bear. Oh, that's. Nah, good. that ain't happening. What the? Uh, I'm. Oh my God! <laughs> Bro! <laughs> I'm actually stuck! Oh, I'm. Oh my God! <laughs> what the heck? Did I hit you out of it? <laughs> If I had this happen to me, though, in a match or a tournament, I think I'd quit. Overall, I'd rate this a hug out of ten. Kuto Shinken wa senzai nouryoku o 100% tsukai kiru. Doku e no teikou ryoku mo. Last but not least, we have Heracross. She is an absolute unit. A powerhouse, a brick wall, and most importantly, requires patience. Being a charge character that plays a bit more on the defensive side, you're gonna have to play a bit slower. However, some unique traits like her air dash and burst damage can really catch opponents off guard if they block too much, and then they can get surprised with the horns of the face. Oh, you wanted me to say something smart about Heracross? <laughs> well, too bad, idiot, because she's perfect. I know I skipped on a fair amount of characters, but to be honest, I'd much rather wait for the game to be complete before going in depth with everyone. So let's talk about the single player content for a brief moment. Going into solo play, you're greeted with training mode, which is pretty self explanatory. You get to whack around this、uh, web effect. Arcade mode is currently not available to play, sadly, and as soon as that's available, I'll be covering that in a future review. The path is this game's campaign or story mode, which is complete. The path is simply a set number of battles that progressively get harder like any other fighting game. What makes it special is when you beat all the opponents without getting KO'd once, you get access to a special final boss fight, which I will not be spoiling here. Not to mention, every time you beat one of the characters, you get a cool little unique windscreen, which is pretty nice. And well, that pretty much sums it up. Even though this game has a lot of progress to make, in the meantime, there's a thriving community. Fun tournaments being held occasionally, and really talented people building a game that deserves all the praise it gets. All I'm trying to say is this game is just pure hype. If you can look past some of the bugs and jank, what you get here is a very promising game, and just honestly, good fun that I just haven't had in a while. As always, thanks for watching, and if you want to play the game, I'll leave links below for you. Hey, maybe we can play it on stream sometime. And remember, stay foxy. The Beat Banger video was a self imposed challenge slash rush job paid for my friend Dice. Normally, I would never review a not safe for work game on the main channel, but I'm not gonna lie, it was fun trying to cover a more mature topic and keep it safe for work for all viewers without compromising the message itself. All kids out of the pool for adult swim. All kids out! Give me five minutes. Yeah, boy. <laughs>
He wanted me to check out a game I never heard of before, and before I could even check it out, he gifts me the game on Steam. Now, I was on my break at work, and since Steam lets you remotely install games if you're away from your PC, I thought, why not? I like rhythm games. And I accepted it. Fast forward six hours later, and I'm finally home playing some Pac-Man. Suddenly, I remember the game DICE gifted me, and being dead tired at like 1am, I booted it up because I had to get up for work at like 5am. So the plan was to play one song, head to bed, and tell DICE, cool game bro, and let it gather dust and steam and move on. So I start the game and it asks me if I'm over the age of 18. I mean, of course I am. I gave it no thought. The intro cutscene begins showing off your generic, your character here avatar, who is apparently going in for a job interview or something. I was too tired to care and just wanted to skip the cutscenes and... Yeah, I was tired of this dweebus nerd only playing babby games on his channel. I decided it was time for him to put on his big boy pants and I got him this. However, the reason why I'm even reviewing this game in the first place is another story. You see, after calling out DICE on Twitter, he joked about a video review, in which I said, no amount of money would make me buckle. Well, it turns out, I buckled. Because rent is due, and I can't afford to turn down offers like this. So, DICE, since you're the type of sponsor funder for this video, do you have anything you'd like to say? Comment, subscribe, and smash that like button. Oh, this is gonna be a long video. Alright, there's no beating around the bush with this game. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be immature because there's boobs. The game starts off with this guy who was supposed to be interviewed for a production manager position at Beatbanger Studios. <laughs> yeah, but things immediately go wrong when the guy they originally hired doesn't show up because of Zoe. That's when our titular character, <laughs> Kathy, sees the new guy. And without hesitation, she snatches him up and they start uh, acting. Jokes aside, I think it's important to mention that sex work is real work, and even though it's very taboo in some parts of the world and this is just a silly frilly little game, I do think a statement could be made here about how these are individuals working to make a living, and they're not some sexaholic degenerates that deserve to be looked down on. But anyway, yeah, your main goal in the game is to climb your way up the corporate ladder. With sex. The vibe of this game is honestly a breath of fresh air in some regards. Menus are simple and stylish with their own themes, and you get that VIP feel that you paid to get into a cool place. When getting into the story mode, I was pleasantly surprised with the quality. Compared to other furry games that have cutscenes like this, I gotta hand it to the devs, they had a vision and made sure to go all the way with it. The voice acting is spot on for all the characters, and nobody has that weird, haha guys, this is so awkward energy that makes you cringe. Basically, the game is not ashamed of being true to itself. This also applies to the cutscenes, which are not only drawn really well, but have some hilarious comedic timing. That fucker! If I ever see his ass on the street, he's dead. What the fuck are you looking at? So again, big props to the voice actors and the artists for making this tie together really well. The gameplay is honestly pretty satisfying, and it being a rhythm game, I expect that to be the case no matter how good the <laughs> visuals are. This sounds silly, but I would compare this to something like a combination of Taiko and Parappa. While the obvious goal is to hit notes without missing any, the scenes that play up top are affected by your gameplay. Again, it's not as dynamic as other games, but if you play exceptionally well, you do get a little bonus scene in the form of the gallery you can unlock. The real challenge of this game is finding a way to appreciate the animation while being intensely focused on hitting all the notes. Actually, Tay. The real challenge is going to be explaining to your friends why you're playing a furry porn game at 1 in the morning, you little freak. Don't think I didn't see you beat banging one out last night. Actually, I'd like to assist in this peculiar pornographic predicament. Hey there, I'm your pop. Come on in, huh? Huh? Come here, come here, come here. Uh, a little too close. Back it away. A little bit away. Back it away. Thank you. You ever find yourself enjoying something particularly NSFW, which obviously, as we all know, stands for Not Silly For Willy, and maybe as a grown man, you want to take a load off and get a load out, but you don't want your friends interrupting you. You don't want all those cheesy messages pouring in of people going like, Hey buddy, what you playing? Hey buddy, what you doing? I hate! I hate! And I'm sure you do too. So here's your solution. Move your mouse right over to Steam. Step 1. Open Steam. Step 2. Click on the Friends tab. And Step 3. Click Invisible. But I mean, I guess a good point could be made. Uh, I, I don't know how to stop it if it's on Discord. If it's on Discord, it's out of my hands, alright? I don't, I don't play around in the land of the groomed kittens, alright? <sighs> Currently, the game is in early access, only offering the initial four stages, but there's plenty to unlock via the music, gallery, and theater. 
And that's all I have to say about Beat Banger. A banger of a game <laughs> with a lot of potential for adults interested in that kind of thing. The music is good, the mods make the game even funnier, and I need to go delete my search history and screenshots folder. Thanks to my buddy Dice who paid me as a challenge to make this video, my Kofi members for helping me continually make videos, and all of you for watching. You guys rock. And remember, stay foxy. Now the last video I edited this year belongs to a YouTuber named Nightsy. After looking for editing work, my friend Citrus recommended me, and a few days later he actually commissioned me to make his video about the Kung Fu Panda 4 trailer. With the exception of a few small projects I've been hired to do in between, this is the first time I made a video for a high profile YouTuber. And while it's basic, I'm quite proud of it. As I work to be an established editor, I hope more people hire me so I can eventually make a living doing cool stuff like this. And that sums up my 2023. A pretty slow but quality filled year that I hope shows off my skills to my friends and viewers. There was a lot of ups and downs in my personal life, but I'm gonna be honest, I think I feel really good about this upcoming year of 2024, and I hope to push myself even further and do even better. Thank you all for the support and my wonderful members on Kofi who enabled me to even keep doing stuff like this and be creative. Have a great 2024, my friends, and remember, stay foxy.